Hi, Kite and Rising Stars. Are you ready for more Holes by Lewis Sacker? Do you remember what happened last time we read? They were talking about the cameras all over camp, watching them, even in the showers. Would you want that? Ew. Ew. Who would want to watch you in the shower? That's gross. I don't know. But they found something. They're looking in the wrong place. And here we've got Stanley Yelnats trying to figure it out, trying to figure out what they're looking for and why they're looking for it. Do you think we'll find any of those answers today when we read? I don't know, but we're on chapter 16. So let's read and see what we learn. Do you have something to drink? Are you sitting in a cozy seat? I like the sunshine coming in from the window beside me. It's kind of nice today. Chapter 16 of Holes. As Stanley entered the rec room, he could hear X-Ray's voice from all the way across the room. See what I'm saying, X-Ray said? Am I right or am I right? The other bodies in the room were a little more than bags of flesh and bones dumped across broken chairs and couches. X-Ray was full of life, laughing and waving his arms around as he talked. Yo, caveman, my man, he called out. Stanley made his way across the room. Hey, slide on over, Squid, said X-Ray. Make room for the caveman. Stanley crashed on the couch. He had looked for a hidden camera in the shower. He hadn't seen anything. And he hoped the warden hadn't either. What's the matter, asked X-Ray. You guys tired or something? He laughed. Hey, keep it down, will you? Groaned Zigzag. I'm trying to watch TV. Stanley glanced uncertainly at Zigzag, who was staring very intently at the busted television screen. The warden greeted the boys at breakfast the next morning and went with them to the holes. Four dug in the holes and three tended to the wheelbarrows. Glad you're here, X-Ray, she said to him. We need your sharp eyes. Stanley spent more time pushing the wheelbarrow than digging because he was such a slow digger. He carted away the excess dirt and dumped it into previously dug holes. He was careful not to dump any of it in the hole where the gold tube was actually found. He could still see the tube in his mind. It seemed so familiar, but he just couldn't place it. He thought that it might have been the lid to a fancy gold pen. KB could have been the initials of a famous author. The only famous authors he could think of were Charles Dickens, William Shakespeare, and Mark Twain. Besides, it didn't really look like the top of a pen. By lunchtime, the warden was beginning to lose her patience. She made them eat quickly so they could get back to work. If you can't get them to work any faster, she told Mr. Sir, then you're going to have to climb down there and dig with them. After that, everyone worked faster, especially when Mr. Sir was watching them. Stanley practically ran when he pushed his wheelbarrow. Mr. Sir reminded them that they weren't Girl Scouts. They didn't quit digging until after every other group had finished. Later, as Stanley sat sprawled across an understuffed chair, he tried to think of a way to tell the warden where the tube was really found without getting himself or X-Ray into trouble. It didn't seem possible. He even thought about sneaking out at night and digging in that hole by himself, but the last thing he wanted to do after digging all day was to dig at night, too. Besides, the shovels were locked up at night, presumably so they couldn't be used as weapons. Mr. Pendansky entered the rec room. Stanley, he called as he made his way to him. His name's Caveman, said X-Ray. Stanley, said Mr. Pendansky. My name's Caveman, said Stanley. Well, I have a letter here for someone named Stanley Yelnats, said Mr. Pendansky. He turned over an envelope in his hands. It doesn't say Caveman anywhere. Uh, thanks, Stanley said, taking it. It was from his mother. Who's it from? Squid asked. Your mother? Stanley put it in the big pocket of his pants. Aren't you going to read it to us? Asked Armpit. Give him some space, said X-Ray. If Caveman doesn't want to read it to us, he doesn't have to. It's probably from his girlfriend. Stanley smiled. He read it later. 
after all the other boys had gone to dinner. Dear Stanley, it was wonderful to hear from you. Your letter made me feel like one of the other moms who can afford to send their kids to summer camp. I know it's not the same, but I am very proud of you for trying to make the best of a bad situation. Who knows? Maybe something good will come of all of this. Your father thinks he is real close to a breakthrough on his sneaker project. I hope so. The landlord is threatening to evict us because of the odor. I feel sorry for the little old lady who lived in a shoe. It must have smelled awful. Love from both of us. What's so funny? Zero asked. It startled him. He thought Zero had gone to dinner with the others. Nothing. It's just something my mom wrote. What'd she say? Zero asked. Nothing. Oh, sorry, said Zero. Well, see, my dad is trying to invent a way to recycle old sneakers. So the apartment kind of smells bad because he's always cooking these old sneakers. So anyway, in the letter, my mom said she felt sorry for that little old lady who lived in a shoe. You know, because it must have smelled bad in there. Zero stared blankly at him. You know, the nursery rhyme? Zero said nothing. You've heard the nursery rhyme about the little old lady who lived in a shoe? No. Stanley was amazed. How does it go? Asked Zero. Didn't you ever watch Sesame Street? Stanley asked. Zero stared blankly. Stanley headed on to dinner. He would have felt pretty silly reciting nursery rhymes at Camp Green Lake. It's the end of chapter 16. Let's read chapter 17. For the next week and a half, the boys continued to dig in and around the area where X-Ray had supposedly found the gold tube. They widened X-Ray's hole as well as the holes Armpit and Squig had been digging until the fourth day when all three holes met and formed one big hole. As the days wore on, the warden became less and less patient. She arrived later in the morning and left earlier in the afternoon. Meanwhile, the boys continued to dig later and later. This is no bigger than it was when I left you yesterday, she said, after arriving late one morning, well after sunrise. What have you been doing down there? Nothing, said Squid. It was the wrong thing to say. At just that moment, Armpit was returning from a bathroom break. How nice of you to join us, she said. And what have you been doing? I had to, you know, go. The armpit, ja excuse me, the warden jabbed at armpit with her pitchfork, knocking him backward into the big hole. The pitchfork left three holes in the front of his shirt and three tiny spots of blood. You're giving these boys too much water, the warden told Mr. Pendansky. They continued to dig until late afternoon, long after all the other groups had finished for the day. Stanley was down in the big hole along with the other six boys. They had stopped using the wheelbarrows. He dug his shovel into the side of the hole. He scooped up some dirt and was raising it to the surface when Zigzag's shovel caught him in the side of the head. He collapsed. He wasn't sure if he passed out or not. He looked up to see Zigzag's wild head staring down at him. I ain't digging that dirt up, Zigzag, Zag, Zigzag said. That's your dirt. Hey, Mom, called Magnet. Caveman's been hurt. Stanley brought his fingers up the side of his neck. He felt his wet blood and a pretty big gash just below his ear. Magnet helped Stanley to his feet, then up and out of the hole. Mr. Sir made a bandage out of a piece of sack of sunflower seeds and taped it over Stanley's wound. Then he told him to get back to work. This isn't nap time. When Stanley returned to the hole, Zigzag was waiting for him. That's your dirt, Zigzag said. You have to dig it up. It's covering my dirt. Stanley felt a little dizzy. He could see a small pile of dirt. It took him a moment to realize that it was the dirt which had been on his shovel when he was hit. He scooped it up, then Zigzag dug his shovel into the ground underneath where Stanley's dirt had been. Does that make any sense to you? Does he 
seems very weird to me. But it's the end of chapter 17. We're on chapter 18. Let's keep reading. The next morning, Mr. Sir marched the boys to another section of the lake, and each boy dug his own hole, five feet deep and five feet wide. Stanley was glad to be away from the big hole. At least now he knew just how much he had to dig for the day, and it was a relief not to have the other shovel swinging past his face or the warden hanging around. He dug his shovel into the dirt, then slowly returned to dump it into a pile. He had to make his turn smooth and slow. If he jerked too quickly, he felt a throbbing pain just above his neck where Zigzag's shovel had hit him. That part of his head between his neck and his ear was considerably swollen. There were no mirrors in camp, but he imagined he looked like he had a hard-boiled egg sticking out of him. The remainder of his body hardly hurt at all. His muscles had strengthened, and his hands were tough and calloused. He was still the slowest digger, but not all that much slower than Magnet. Less than 30 minutes after Magnet returned to camp, Stanley spat in his hole. After his shower, he put his dirty clothes in his crate and got out his box of stationery. He stayed in the tent to write the letter so Squid and the other boys wouldn't make fun of him for writing to his mother. Dear Mom and Dad, camp is hard, but challenging. We've been running obstacle courses and have to swim long distances on the lake. Tomorrow, we learn... He stopped writing as Zero walked into the tent, then returned to his letter. He didn't care what Zero thought. Zero was nobody. Tomorrow we learn to rock climb. I know that sounds scary, but don't worry. Zero was standing beside him now, watching him write. Stanley turned and felt his neck throb. I don't like it when you read over my shoulder, okay? Zero said nothing. I'll be careful. It's not all fun and games here but I think I'm getting a lot out of it. It builds character. The other boys, I don't know how, said Zero. What? Can you teach me? Stanley didn't know what he was talking about. Teach you what, to rock climb? Zero stared at him with penetrating eyes. What? said Stanley. He was hot, tired, and sore. I want to learn to read and write, said Zero. Stanley let out a short laugh. He wasn't laughing at Zero. He was just surprised. All this time, he had thought Zero was reading over his shoulder. Sorry, he said. I, I don't know how to teach. After digging all day, he didn't have the strength to try to teach Zero to read and write. He needed to save his energy for the people who counted. You don't have to teach me to write, said Zero. Just to read. I don't have anybody to write to. Sorry, Stanley said again. His hands and muscles weren't the only parts of his body that had toughened over the past several weeks. His heart had hardened as well. He finished his letter. He barely had enough moisture in his mouth to seal and stamp the envelope. It seemed that no matter how much water he drank, he was always thirsty. And that's the end of chapter 18, friends. You're going to have to wait till tomorrow to read more. What do you think about that? Zero didn't know how to read and write, and he was asking for help. Sometimes it's hard to ask for help. He asked for help, and Stanley told him, no thanks, not helping you, I'm too tired, looking out for myself. Especially now, we really need to look out for each other, don't we? Is there something that you might be able to do to help somebody that they don't know how to do? It might be worth thinking about. That might be a way that you could help. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow when we read more of Holes by Lewis Sacker. Bye, friends.